second problem is actually a real life example of a wall which is used for this in the civil engineering area uh, sometime it is used to stop water or sometime it is used to support uh, a body and we call this wall as a gravity wall because the wall stand against the gravity and whenever this kind of structure used in the field we have to identify the forces on the structure as well as the structure will topple if I will apply a certain force so in that case I have to find the centroid of the body as well as I am also interested to find the moment of area of the body so the given problem is related to identifying the second moment of area of this gravity wall about its centroidal axis which is parallel to the base so please understand that in the given problem the picture showing one structure and let me tell you that this is a two dimensional body because our scope is, relate, uh, is, is limited to identify the moment of area as well as the centroid for the planar body. So I am considering a planar uh, gravity wall made by the concrete and I have to find the moment of area about an axis which is a centroidal axis. So let me tell you what is a centroidal axis. A centroidal axis is passed from the centroid of the body. For example, if I am having a triangle, so my centroidal axis will be one axis. This Suppose this is x, x axis. So here will be the centroid of the body and these two will be my centroidal axis. Similarly, in this case, I have to find the moment of area about its centroidal axis. So as I have to find the centroid, the first job would be identify the centroidal axis. So for that case, first I have to identify or I have to compute the centroid of this body. Once I will calculate the centroid, then I will mark the centroidal axis and I will solve the problem. So the problem is a little complicated as well as little lengthy. I will try to finish it this as soon as, um, as quickly as possible. So let's start. The first job should be make a clear and big picture so that the identification of centroid become easy. So I have made a big picture here and then the second job would be, so my first job would be a large picture. The, my second job would be identify different sections. So in this case, I can identify four different sections because this is not a regular shape. So what I can do, I can consider a large rectangular section. This is then I can consider the second rectangular section. So suppose this is my section 1, the larger one is my section 2. Then what I can do? Finally, these two triangles are actually not there, but I have to assume these two triangles and then in final formulation, I have to subtract corresponding term. So now these are my two section. So let this is one triangular part, which is actually not there second one is this triangular part fourth one would be this complete rectangular body so this is the rectangular body and the fourth the another one would be this rectangular body so let this is my another rectangular body so now i have four sections let's mark this is section one the larger one is the section two this is section this this triangle is section three and this triangle is section four so first job done that I have made a clear picture then I have marked the different section my third job would be to mark the centroid of individual section so now as there are four sections so let's start with the first section suppose this centroid of this body will be here and I know that this is it is a rectangular body and the dimension of the rectangular body is given in this picture so the total length is 0 0.6 plus 2.4 plus 0 0.6 so this total distance will be basically 3.6 height is given 0 0.4 this is given 1.2 and if I'll making a rectangular body from here I can know I know that that this distance is 3 so the size of this rectangular will be 3 here also it is 3 so it will be 3 by 3 in case of the first triangle, since the total distance is uh, 3 and this is 1.2, so this would be basic, uh, my 1.8 and height of this triangle will again 3. Similarly for this triangle, height will be 3 
and the base will be 0 0.6 which is given in the question so now I have marked the dimensions of my body then I am going to mark the four different centroids so for the first body my centroid will be here and the distance of the centroid from different sides of the body now I can define the distances second would be the large rectangular body so this is my second centroid the third centroid for a triangle will be somewhere here and for the fourth body the triangle the centroid will be somewhere here so now I have made the four centroid and from the formulation I know that in case of a triangle the position of the centroid is one third of this length so if suppose it is B this would be B by 3 suppose this is H this would be H by 3 so now this position I can mark here that this is 3 so it will be 1 similarly this position I can mark that this would be again this is 3 so this would be 1 as I know that this is 3 by 3 so this is my distance 1.5 and this is 0 0.4 so half of this will be 0 0.2 and now I have to make I have to make my reference axis so I am taking these are my references so this is my one of reference and this is my second reference I usually consider the extreme bottom of my geometry and extreme left of my geometry as the reference axis so now I have made the reference axis and now I am going to make a table I request students so generally make generally solve this problem using a table so that you will do minimum errors and so that I am going to explain you that how you can make the table and use this table to get the answers of the problem. So now the first job in the table would be consider the four different sections. So now my four sections are the rectangular body, then the larger square body I should say, then this triangle and this triangle. So these are the four bodies. The second would be the area of these four sections. So here I am mentioning the area. For the first it will be 0 0.4 into 3.6, 3 by 3. 1 by 2, 3 into 1.8, 1 by 2, 0 0.6 into 3. If you will see this picture, you will be able to correlate these values. After making this, now my job would be to find the, point it out the centroidal value. So if I will see the, for the first case, the centroid of the body lying here, that means the distance from my reference, this would be my x1 bar. And my x1 bar will nothing but the half of the 3.6, so it would be 1.8. For the second section this is the larger rectangular body and here is my reference and here is the centroid so I have to write this total distance I am not going to write this half this distance only because this is the centroidal position from the local reference of this individual rectangular body but here is my global reference so this would be basically 0 0.6 plus 1.5 so it will be 0 0.6 plus 1.5 this is my second the third is this triangle and I know that here is the triangle this side is 1.8 and the position of the centroid basically lies one third of this length so it will be 1.8 by 3 basically 0 0.6 so now the position of this centroid from the reference will be 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6 so it would be basically 1.2 and for the fourth triangle I know that this distance basically one third of this length so it would be 0 0.2 so ultimately the length of centered of this triangle from the reference will be 3.6 minus 0 0.2 so it will be 3.4 basically so now I have made four x axis references again I am going to write for the y axis so for the first case the y will be basically 0 0.2 for the second case it would be 0 0.4 plus 1.5 so it will be 1.9 for the third triangle it is here so I know that the total distance is 3 plus 0 0.4 so 3.4 and the distance of the centroid from the top of this triangle is 1 so the distance will be 3.4 minus 1 so it would be 2.4 similarly for this triangle the position of the centroid is here which is 1 plus 0 0.4 away from the base so it would be 1.4 so now I have uh, uh, written the position of the individual centroid and then I can apply the formula if I want to calculate the x bar my x bar formula will be a1 x1 plus a2 x2 minus a3 x3 minus a4 x4 please understand that these two sections are actually not there so when I am solving the problem I have to subtract the corresponding terms similarly when I will write the denominator term it would be a1 plus a2 minus a3 minus a4 when I will calculate the y bar it will be a1 y1 plus y basically this x1 x2 x3 x4 are nothing but these four values 
these four values. Similarly, for y1, it will be a2y2 minus a3y3 minus a4y4 divided by a1 plus a2 minus a3 minus a4. So when I will put all the values in these two formulation formulas, I am getting that my x bar is coming 2.221 and y bar is coming as 1.411. So now I have calculated the centroid of this irregular shape and my next job would be to find the moment of area about the centroidal axis. So if I will see here then that this is my body and I have identified the centroid and the position of the centroid about from this line is basically given by the 2.221 and the position of the centroid from the base is given by 1.411. Now as I know that I have to find the moment of area about this line which is passing from the centroid because this is my centroidal axis xx but I don't know exactly what would be the value of moment of area about this line but what I can do I have four different sections and I know the moment of area of all the four sections about their own uh, centroidal axis so I can apply the x parallel axis theorem I can transfer the four individual moment of area about this line and then I will be able to calculate the final moment of area so let me explain you that how I'm going to transfer this suppose this is my body and this is my section 1 so I am going to explain you that I am going how I am going to transfer the moment of area of the individual section from this uh, from its own centroid to the global centroid so I know that this is the body the size of the body is given as 0 0.4 and 3.6 this is the individual centroidal of the rectangular body and in case of a rectangular body the moment of area of the about its own centroidal is defined by the bd cube by 12 where b is the base and d is the height so in my case for this body the moment of area will be defined by 3.6 into 0 0.4 cube by 12 and then i am going to apply the parallax theorem so the parallax theorem states that if you know the moment of area about an axis and if you want to shift then you have to use this formulation that formulation basically says that if you are interested to find here then you have to use let's this I, xx is nothing but the i1 and i have calculated this value which is coming out 0 0.0192 uh, i want to tell all the students and the viewers that i I did my best to calculate these numerical values using my own calculator but sometime it may happen that I made some mistake and these values are not correct so I request all of you that you solve the problem by your own hand and the, if these values are not correct change this value don't trust that this is the correct value and try again and again to get this value it may happen that I calculate and I found I, I did some errors and I calculate I get the wrong values so, but I tried my best to get these values so now this is 0 0.0192 and I am assuming that this is I1 and I want to find the moment of area about this line by transferring the moment of area of this small rectangular body so I have to apply this for formulation that is I1 plus A1 H1 bar square where A1 is the area of this body I1 is the moment of area and this H is nothing but the shifting distance in my case if I know if I will go back and I will see here that this is the global centroidal value which is 1.411 and here is the local centroid of this rectangular body and I, I know that this is 0 0.2 so in my case the shifting distance will be from here to here that would be this 1.411 minus 0 0.2 so the shifting distance will be y bar minus 0 0.2 and that is coming out 1.211 so I when I will put this value back in this formulation I will get the moment of area of this rectangular body about this line similarly I have to consider the second body and I have to shift its moment of area about the centroidal axis and, and so on I will do for all the value and then I will get the final moment of area so here I am going this I am going to explain this again for this larger rectangular body as I know that for the rectangular body the center will be here let this is 2 2 and the moment of area will again defined by bd cube by 12 but in this case my b and d both are 3 by 3 so this is 3 into 3 cube by 12 now I am interested to find the shifting distance I know that here is the global centroid and the position of the global cent global centroid is 1.411 from the base but this total distance is nothing but the 1.5 plus 0 0.4 
so the total distance is 1.9 so i know that if i want to calculate this shifting distance it would be 1.9 minus 1.411 which is coming out 0.489 and when i will apply the parallaxis theorem i will put all this value in this formulation i will get the second moment of area but at this point i would like to tell you that you can solve this whole problem using a table so when you will put all the value in the table it will be easy for you to cross check otherwise if you want to solve the problem what i have explained here you can solve the problem in this way also so let me explain you how i will make the table so suppose this is my body these are the four centroidal axes i always request a student that make a larger picture and then try to solve the problem so these are my four centroids and i know that for individual bodies for rectangular body my formula for the moment of area bd cube by 12 second rectangular body for the triangular body it will be bh cube by 36 so here i am having two triangle so if i am interested to find the moment of area about this line it will be defined by bh cube by 36 in this case this will be my height and this would be my base so for this a base will be basically 1.8 height is 3 so it will be 3 cube by 36 similarly for this triangle the moment of area about this line would be defined by bh cube by 36 where base is the 0.6 height is 3 meter and the 36 for other two i have already explained so now i am not going to show here this is my table which is the extension of the centroidal table so i started with these four bodies then i made wrote the area then i wrote the to uh, centered of individual section and i calculated the centered x bar and y bar now as i know that i am actually interested only in the y shifting y direction shifting so i am not interested in this value so this is my y, y bar value then i am writing the moment of inertia of moment of area of all the sections which i have calculated using these four formulation so for in case of the small rectangular body it is coming out i am taking it as a i1 it is 0.0192 for second one it is computing as 6.75 for third it is i am using this formulation for third and i am getting this value 4.05 for the fourth one i am solving this value and i am getting this value 1.35 so now i have four moment of areas the next job which is very important is finding the shifting distance so the shifting distance either you can visualize in or using this picture that i know that i have to shift the first section from here to here section section from here to here third will be from here to here and fourth will be from here to here so this would be my h1 bar this would be my h2 bar this would be my h3 bar and this would be my h4 bar but instead of solving the problem on the picture what you can do you can remember that whenever you want to find the h bar there is a thumb rule that you have to use the mod value of y bar minus this y individual section y what is this this is basically the difference of these two values if you will see here if i'll see that i have to shift this from here to here the total is basically 1.411 and this is 0.2 so your answer is going to be 1.211 so you can see here that This is zero point two. This is one point four one one. So the difference of these two value will be one point two one one. Similarly, this value will be. I want to shift this larger rectangular body from this its own axis, uh, centroidal axis, to the required axis. So it would be what the total distance is nothing but the zero point four plus one point five. So it will be one point nine minus one point four one one. You can see here that this is one point four one one. This is one point nine. So different difference of these two will give. this value similarly different of these two i am not interested this on this so different of these two will give this value and different of these two will give this value so now i have the four shifted distance and then i can write this next column in my table which will be nothing but the application of the parallaxis theorem for individual axis so that would be i plus a h square so when i if i will complete my table up to this point i know that this is my i this is my area and this is the shifting distance when i will put these three columns into this formulation i am getting these four values so now i have all the four shifted moment of area and finally what i need to do i have to find the i net that would be defined by i1 plus i2 minus i3 and minus i4 please remember actually this is my section 1 this is the whole rectangular body section 2 this, this triangle is section 3 and this triangle is section 4 these two triangles are not there actually so i have to subtract their moment of inertia but in the last not in the beginning so finally you will calculate all the four moment of inertia applying the same philosophy that i plus h square 
and then you will use this formulation to get the final answer and which is coming out 2.35 thank you